here with Barton George of, of Dell. He's the Director of Marketing for Web and, and Tech. Um, there's your colleague, Joseph George, is uh, not in the, in the room anyway, we may, jo may be joining us. I don't, no know, I don't know where he is. Yeah, exactly. no As I said, it'll be pretty than... obvious if he does join that we are not related. <laughs> but, but we're uh... glad we could get you guys on. I know sort of a, a last minute ins insertion, so thank you. for. No, well, time. thanks for having us. Very happy to be here. So, I mean, everyone, you know, it's what's so cool about the Dell story with Hadoop is, you know, we talked to EMC, we talked to HP, they're all in the server business, all had proprietary servers. Dell made its move on being commodity. The people say commodity hardware, that was the PC. Hadoop is built for, com quote, commodity hardware. But I mean, Dell's got some high performance machines. So, so you guys must see a big uptick in cloud and, and Hadoop in particular. Can you just share quick insight into, uh, obviously the web side, the web side of the business has been growing, now Hadoop's moving on to financial service and healthcare. What's the uptake been on uh, from your seat as a, as a hardware vendor with Hadoop and big data? Well, just to, to roll the clock back a little bit, just to tell you how we got into this, um, about four years ago we started a group called Data Center Solutions. And it was just because, just as you're saying, we're seeing this huge scale out architecture taking hold. And it was people like Facebook, like Microsoft Bing, who are all these who are customers, uh, that were designing in a way that enterprises weren't, which was basically, let's put the redundancy and availability in the software layer rather than the hardware layer. Uh, and then you scale out as you need to grow. So we, we had this business has been growing for about, uh, it's been about five years now. Uh, and we've had a bunch of cloud solutions. And so as we start looking for other solutions that map well to the scaled out architecture, uh, and then you look at what's happening in the world today in, in, uh, in web and tech, and, and big data is a, is a perfect fit. This whole idea that rather than scaling up, you're scaling out. So with something like Hadoop, you put it on these, uh, this, as you say, commodity hardware, the, the open hardware, and then as you need to run bigger and bigger batches, you just add servers as it goes along. So it maps really well to what we've been doing. So that's how we got into this whole area of, of Hadoop. And so we partnered with Cloudera, um, who are providing this, the distro. And then what we provide is we provide the servers, we provide the racks, the switches, and you can either get it, if you want it all done for you, we can rack and stack it for you and cable it ahead of time. Or, if you're more in the web space, we have a reference architecture, we have a, a deployment guide, uh, and then you can do it yourself. And then there's the secret sauce, which is, is something we're kind of proud of, which is actually software that we've written. And most people don't think of Dell as a, as a software provider, but there's a software framework called Crowbar, and I'm, I'm a walking advertisement for it here, this is the Crowbar shirt. But basically, what we did is we took Ops Code Chef and we wrapped it in software so that you can take it and you can deploy servers in uh, hours as opposed to days. And so then what we did is you've got the, um, you've got that software, which- That was we, Chef? Excuse me? That was Chef? So we, there's Chef in the middle in the cookbooks and then we wrapped it around it with and what we call that is Crowbar. Okay, so Crowbar it. has has Chef within it, it. Um, okay. uh, the open source part of it. And then on top of it, we have what is known as our bar clamps. And so it allows you to use this crowbar functionality for different things. So uh, Cloud Foundry, VMware's Cloud Foundry is building a bar clamp now. We just announced this morning that we're open sourcing five of the bar clamps for Hadoop. Um, so things like for Zookeeper, for Pig, for uh, Cloudera's enterprise version, for Cloudera's um, uh, community edition, and then two more, and I don't, uh, I'm not. I forget which ones, but uh, we're gonna. Those are all. We're open sourcing those now, and so uh, that's available. It actually started out life as as a way to deploy OpenStack. So it was a cloud um, framework, and then we've taken it over and and put it to use for Hadoop. We're going to ask you about OpenStack. I mean, I was, before I do, I, you guys have really gone after the open source movement. Um, it seems like relatively recently, but maybe there's some other history there. Can you talk about how Dell sort of got into that and? and why, what was the motivation? Well, I think with, with um, open source in general, Dell has been a great platform for running, say Linux, if you, if you wind the clock back about 10 years ago, it's a great platform for running Linux um, and other open source software. And so what we're doing is we're just looking out at what's available in the market and the way that, that Dell views our capabilities as we describe ourselves as open, capable, and affordable. And so we're looking for things that resonate with that. And so the whole idea of this, this whole ethos of being open and of allowing you to take what we have and combine it together in a non-proprietary way um, is, is some of the, the, the lens that we use to look, 
look at solutions with. So when we look at something like an OpenStack, uh, we're one of the founding members of OpenStack from back of last July. In fact, before it was even a public um, a developer conference, we were one of the, the initial people there alongside NASA and, and Rackspace and Citrix and a couple others. And so we've been involved with that since then. And then as I said, Crowbar was originally designed with OpenStack in mind. How do you get your OpenStack cloud deployed in, in hours as opposed to yeah. days or weeks? Well, so we're, you know, obviously SiliconANGLE, we have a broad audience. We have up and down the stack kind of range of audience from executive to dev down to the technical and developers. So we do a lot of development, uh, developers watch and, and read our stuff. The big thing that everyone wants to know is, developers love ease of use. So when you have hardware and software, usually you have very few developers who really understand both. So mm -hmm. when you mention Chef, and this is something I think of as provisioning, right? I mean, software developers love ease of use, right? So, I mean, how do you frame that when, uh, if you're Dell, you want to have that appeal to the software developers, obviously with OpenStack you kind of aligning with you know the whole onboarding of developers, because you want developers to just play, right? And oh compute, yeah. let that be kind of like taken care of. What strategies do you guys have for that? Is it to write more software? Is it to do more partnerships? Um, how do you get those developers to, to love Dell, not look at you as just another box? And that's exactly what the, the team that I'm a part of, the Web and Tech, is focusing on is developers. And so there's other parts of Dell's a big company. We serve various verticals, banking, retail, et cetera. The vertical I'm looking at is Web and Tech. The key uh, constituent within Web and Tech would be developers. So that's exactly what we're doing is how do we appeal to developers and say that, hey, Dell understands what you need and how we can help you better. And so one of the, the obvious things are, um, as you say, Developers like easy things, but only when it's in the in the boring part of it. So in the provisioning, that's where they want the help. Now, up in the analytics area, they want to build it themselves. Yeah. That's where they really want to get uh, roll up their sleeves yeah. and, and get in and start designing. But the the things they don't want that, any waste any time on configuration management. Stuff. Exactly the drudge, yeah. what they see is the drudgery, and so that's where we look at and things. virtualization to some point. A lot of configuration hassles. That, that, well, it's getting much better than it was three years ago. Exactly, years. and that's the whole you know, the uh, whole idea behind DevOps is on the operations side and that's what we're starting to, to come up from is how do we make it easier to to manage and deploy and and to to operate and so that's the view that, that we're taking and I think with everything we do we're looking at a, a continuum from make partner or buy so if you just take the the cloud space we've uh, we've built our servers we're writing the software for the for the uh, deployment we're partnering with people like the uh, uh, the people behind OpenStack or behind Joyent, and then we're, we purchase companies like Boomi or SecureWorks, uh, who are other people. So it, it will depend for each and everything. We look at the opportunity and see where does it make the most sense. Does it make the most sense to partner, to, to build, or to buy? We got a question from Twitter. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Twitter himself? Ask, 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 Barton, ask Barton how he intends to serve the market with cloud servers when the lead time for C2100 is sometimes one month plus. And so that's something that we're, we're looking at is how do, we, how do we operationalize that to make it quicker? Because that is something that you do need. You can't have uh, a lead time of, of a month plus and, and be serving this market. And so that is something we're aware of and we're working to, to, to get down. Um, Jeremy Carroll, at Jeremy underscore Carroll. point is if you're going to be uh, elastic and flexible and fast time to market, you've got to be able to install infrastructure faster so you can dial it up. No, exactly, and because I think that's one of the one of the biggest points here when you're talking about developers and you're talking about the companies we're talking about is the ramp time is, as you're pointing out, is is really fast. And so if you aren't there to to scale when they're ready to scale, then that's, then you're out of luck as as So I guess a, the answer yeah. for Jeremy is, when you have them on availability, buy them. Get them, get both of them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and, then, and then charge a markup on eBay. Uh, <laughs> Um, and that'll get you through until Dell sorts this out, right? I mean, but yes. so we were talking earlier about you know how life can be a zero sum game. Yes, there's always some you know shrinkage in terms of more power. We saw HP launch Moonshot, which is the initial strike into the low voltage, low power mm -hmm. ARM chipset kind of deal. Uh, that being kind of the new thing. But you know, in, in general, yeah, you get better price value. But but at the end of the day, whether you're buying boxes, Dell boxes, as to be a, a provider enterprise, or you move to the cloud. Someone's got to buy the servers, right? So right. So does that shift to the cloud service providers? So with OpenStack, what is your experience on the cloud service provider market? I mean, you know the enterprises love Dell. You guys have been, I mean, you've, you've 
establish a clear position leadership and position in enterprise. But as they stop buying servers or forecasted to do more virtualization and use more cloud, there's no magical server farm. <laughs> People still got to buy more Dell servers. So how do you guys address that marketplace? And, and, and is that true? Well, I, yeah. So I think that there's a. It's a, once you say, once you say again, as you say, the zero sum game. And so we're going to be looking to hosters, and that actually falls within the web tech vertical. It does fall because vertical. it's that same type of scaled out architecture. So we're going to those people and saying, hey, we have the the scaled out architecture, and on top of that, we can put OpenStack uh, to to help you with this. And so that's a, a the a big example of that is DreamHost in Los Angeles, and. Um, we had a big sale to them. We have a case study with them, and they're a big hoster down there, and they're running OpenStack, and they're also writing uh, a bar clamp for um, for Crowbar for one of their languages that, that, that they're producing as well. So uh, it's a good example of someone who is, who's using all the components that we're, we're putting together. And so we'll start looking more at those types of, of players. How is OpenStack evolving? And how real is it? We've had some debates internally amongst the SiliconANGLE team, and we've also participated with debates in the market. HP recently joined OpenStack, and that was kind of like weird. Okay, you know, what cloud strategy are they going with today? Um, you guys have been pretty committed to this, obviously, working with Rackspace, who've been really the founding father in the beginning. Um, where is it? Is it going to fork? Is it going to have its own little flavors? Are people going to hijack it? Is it going to be slowed down? Are there competing interests, all of the above, or none of the above, well, or? Yeah, I think it's, it's very. That's kind of the question on everyone's mind. Is it, is it marketing hype, or is it like the real deal? I guess it depends on how much you're, you you believe what's what they're talking about. It's obviously the the amount of progress that it has made in little over a year is an, is astounding. That being said, is the marketing even more uh, further out in front of that? So I think it depends on what the yes. what what the expectations are. <laughs> we right? know that, so yes, so I think yeah. So by if you were to look at any project, it's a great it is, project. We support yes, love it. It has come, but at the same time, it's not going to cure cancer tomorrow. But I think some people are thinking that it will. And so I, I do believe you are going to see a little bit of the of the backlash because people are expecting so much for it. But at the same time, I think there's the there is the reality underneath that it is a true platform. So yeah. Um, well, you know, one of the research projects that Dave and I are kicking off is actually, and we've been debating on the cube since when June with the HP Discover is. OpenStack and a lot of these open source projects are totally noble on their own, stand on their own merit. Really, you know, you cannot support so perfect, right? So just as involved hypervisors, no one wants lock and no one wants Oracle. But is there demand for, is the demand so much, is so high that the open source still is too slow? So that's the thing that we're actually trying to put our finger on. We don't know the answer. So our, our thesis is that, you know, when you have demand, people want solutions today. So. You know, that's an issue. We're trying to get our arms around it. So what do you say to that? Is Because we're trying to look around here at Hadoop World and look at the demand. Is, it, is demand so high that open source needs to go faster? Um, or everything's okay? Complicated question. Um, but I do think that there's a lot of people who are working at it from many different angles. I think one of the, one of the things that we're learning from this conference is that for the people who are leading the pack, the, the Ebays, the Etsys, the, the Amazons, um, the Facebooks, the Googles, those people are, are using Hadoop um, to its capacity at this point. Then there's the other people, uh, as the gentleman from JP Morgan this morning was talking about, which is there's this fear and trepidation as well with, with what's coming on, but they can't ignore it because it, uh, it is going to provide true value but it's not yet at that point where the average Joe or Josephine can can pick up, uh, pick up with it. So I think we're going to see a um, uh, a lot of stuff that that needs to be done to take what's been done by the by the cutting edge folks, the bleeding edge, and make it more available for prime time. And that's where the open source group has to fill in. I think it's at the at the cutting edge, it's doing great. It just needs to, to provide more of that ease of use and, and knitting together. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, we're here inside the cube with Bart and George from Dell.